Lana is coming from Sweden and we continue about uh, uh, the goals of the agenda 2030. Thank you to be with us. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, but I'm so short, I can't stand beside it here. No, I, I want to see you. I, I prefer to, well, I stand here, no problem. Uh, so thank you very much. I will stand closely to this one so you hear me. Thank you very much to, uh, to be invited here. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, as you probably can see from the picture here, I'm not a geoscience myself. I'm an engineer and a sociologist, and I'm very much a gender studies uh, researcher. Uh, so I'm a professor in human work science, focusing on, uh, on the social aspects of, uh, of working life, and especially on uh, gender equality. Uh, and I'm uh, working at Luleå University of Technology up in the very north of Sweden. Uh, I'm going to talk about gender equality in geoscience, why and how. Uh, so I'm going to, to uh, why I'm here is because I've been having a project together with a lot of geoscience people. Uh, it's a project that's called ENGIE, encouraging girls to study geoscience and engineering. And as uh, Clara, where is she? Yeah. This is exactly in the mode, in, in the same mode that you were talking about. It's important to encourage girls to study geoscience and engineering. And it's quite, a, it was, has been, it's ended now. It has been a quite a large project that we have had uh, during a couple of years. And uh, the focus has been for, for girls 13 to 18 years and uh, trying to enlarge the interest uh, for studying geoscience and related engineering disciplines. Uh, and uh, it was uh, about 25 institutions from uh, uh, several countries. And in total, I think it's actually 21 European countries that has been involved here. And it's quite a large job. It's a lot of work packages. And I'm going to talk from my perspective. and. Uh, I have done a study of gender equality. Uh, there's been a lot of work uh, taking, uh, taking uh, uh, producing uh, material for teachers and, and that kind of things. But I will just tell you a little bit of some results from our survey and workshops. Uh, and uh, what we can see, for example, is that geoscience education is not so numerical gender unequal from an overall perspective. It's ac actually uh, quite 50-50 uh, among women and men. There are differences in different type of geoscience education, earth science, a little bit lower, environmental science, a large number of women, and geo and mineral engineering is it's the lowest. Uh, and uh, that's also my, <laughs> my area, the engineering part. Uh, but what was most the positive thing here is that both girls and boys, they were familiar with and interested in geoscience, and they were good and, at that in school. Our survey shows that when they are young. <laughs> uh, uh, but one little bit more depressing thing, it was when we, ha we had also a survey among the teachers, and their view was that the boys had much more interest in geoscience than the girls. But when the girls answered themselves, it, it was they were more or less the same, but the teachers thought that the boys are much more interested. Well, another more uh, depressing thing is that the male teachers didn't think that women's underrepresentation in geoscience is a problem. Uh, it was not so many, but there were uh, clearly uh, di gender differences in these uh, answers. And it was also uh, when uh, it was a clear sign that uh, the problem was that there were gen gender biases that were restricting girls' uh, actions and opportunities in these areas. For example, uh, a, girl's, a, a young girl should not be getting muddy, exploring just for fun, doing uh, exploration in, in, in the nature, uh, in some countries, in some cultures. Uh, but if you go back to, well, it, the geoscience education 
it's not so numerical gender and unequal when the when the kids are young but later something happens uh, so we we also did surveys with the women professionals and their experiences at work and they talk about a lot of positive things on why they are working with with the geoscience but they also mentioned some problematic things gender bias gender inequality uh, hostile workplaces uh, masculine culture non-family friendly work settings and a lot of other things that somehow restrict also the grown-up women in in geoscience so something must be done uh, and i will tell you a little bit about uh, my study uh, my research is mostly within mining so this is my my uh, my examples here is from the the mining industry uh, so when we talk when we talk to the mining companies and we ask them why do you uh, work with gender equality and they are saying that well they need to be competitive the, the industry needs to attract skilled so here we comes to the, the skills are really important for the for the mining industry they need to get people that are skilled uh, so therefore they need to be more attractive and to keep up with the with the rest of society uh, and they also uh, say that we need gender equality to to actually to be uh, to to be able to focus on a sound safety culture uh, so what we what we see how the the gen the the mining companies how they discuss gender equality they see it as a important base for social sustainable development in the mining sector uh, but mostly uh, it's a uh, gender aspects uh, they are included in the industry's discussions of recruitment uh, there is a need for more people and skills to the north of sweden right now we have the green and digital trans industrial transformation going on and the huge large uh, uh, investments uh, building new uh, new uh, uh, production sites uh, and in steel, in mining, in batteries, in energy, power, di digitalization, and therefore there's a lot of investments in recruitment. And gender equality here is seen as an enable. So how do I switch? Okay, get the, the power back. <laughs> nope. Now, now, now I'm back. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I just wanted to, to, to mention, I'm going to focus on the problems, the gender inequality problems, uh, because if gender equality is seen as enable, then we need to understand why do we not have gender equality? Why, what, what's the problem with gender inequality? Uh, and this, uh, as you see the the pictures here, it's it's like these giveaways from this from a mining conference in uh, Germany in 2020. Uh, it's a very gender stereotypical uh, pictures, and uh, these are the most. Uh, they are quite okay, I think. I have seen worse uh, in one of the mining company uh, mining conferences. I, I was in uh, in Australia a couple of years ago. They had Google Girls going around the giveaway the giveaways uh, it was uh, extremely different uh, compared to my um, back home, home at the university but nevertheless gender inequality create problems that we can understand uh, and uh, if we go back to sweden that's my home country we can see that there are still uh, gender unequal systems in society and working life and in many other European countries as well. Uh, and there are different conditions of opportunity for women and men in working life generally. And these kind of stereotypical discursive images of women and men hindering in different way, uh, both women and men. Uh, and the most important thing that we can uh, see is this, the gender labeling of industrial work and technology as male. And this has hindering a lot of uh, uh, people. Uh, but I will tell you about why do we need gender equality? Uh, and my own research, I have seen that gender equality gives better flexibility, innovation, capabilities. 
and we talk about gender mixed workplaces. And when I talk about gender mixed, it's uh, when it almost a uh, 50 50 in in industry, there are a few of them, they are not uh, totally uh, scared, but there you can find a few of them everywhere somewhere, but they are not so many, but where they are in place and where women and men work together in all groups at all levels, when they can work together in the same work groups, can change job, switch job with each other, be each other's managers, uh, where gender is no big deal, there is nothing to talk about. Uh, and in these cases, we can actually see an effective and, a, and flexible modern and gender equal work organization with good work environment for everybody. So in, in this case, we can see that gender equality, this is my own research at showing this, that these type of com companies that have this kind of gender mixed workplaces, they function a lot better than the other ones. I will show you just uh, in a moment. Uh, because uh, we can see that gender stereotypes and gender seg segregation functions as hinder for organizational change. It makes the organization slow, inflexible, and more difficult to change. So if you don't have these kind of hinders, then you have a much more possibilities to actually function as you want, want uh, your organization to function. And I will explain to you uh, the problem with gender inequality. Uh, it's, it's that the, the more gender inequality in the organization, the more problems and hinders for positive change. Uh, so we, we have two types of gender in equal organizations. You have first, uh, the first one is also when you have more or less 50-50 people working at the, at the workplaces, but where women and men are working in different tasks, different workplaces, where you have machines that are uh, men machines and you have machines that, that are female machines. Uh, so we have women's jobs and men's job in the same organization. Uh, so it's clear borders between women and men and their workplaces. And there are also quite a stereotype ideas and myths about women and men and about women and men's uh, jobs. And uh, this is also comb combined with different opportunities and conditions for, for work, for example, salaries and that kind of things. And it, but the problem is that it's very difficult to mix women and men uh, at, at the workplaces. And it's a quite a rigid organization and it's organization based on gender, even if it's sometimes informal, but still it's rigid. Uh, the gender homogeneous workplaces where you have just a few of, of, of uh, for example, very few women and a lot, of, a lot of men. Then you have the minority problems for the women a lot of visibility, stereotype roles and extricated differences, quite common. And every one of us that have been uh, women uh, that have been working in male dominated settings, we can, we can recognize this. These are extremely common uh, experiences. And it is an extra work environment problems for the women. Uh, but it's also a conservation of stereotypical and old fashioned expectation of women and men. Uh, and we, the, but the problem for the organization is that there is a confusion of, of competence and gender. It seems that it seems like if you just have the right gender, if you are a man, then you are supposed to be really good in technology, programming, geoscience, perhaps. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's, it's a, often a connection to, to the, the, me, then you, then you, have this kind of confusion of competence and gender. And uh, there is also a problem is this, the, but it's not only a problem, but there are homosocial and emotional ties among the men. Men choose men and men like men. This is very uh, quite a common way of how we function as humans, no problem. But when this is in, built into the organization, then we have a problem. It will be quite slow to change and a lot of resistance when you try to change this. So the workplaces must might need some help to change, and uh, uh, and I think gender and diversity theories could be a good way to do this, uh, to handling both change and resistance, uh, and. Uh, 
for me, I'm doing quite a lot of, uh, of gender research. Uh, and uh, I think that we need to, to, to use research results, both from the theoretical area, but also from the practical. And we are working quite a lot with the co-design, applied development together with industrial companies. And I will give you very briefly a short uh, uh, example. Here you see in the pictures here is actually uh, more and more women working in the mining sector. But here is the project that we have been working right now with. It's called Attract, a roadmap for attractive, inclusive, and safe mining work. It's a, it's a project about the mining work of the future and how to create attract, attractive workplaces, work environment, better work environment, safety, and gender equality. We built this in social socio-technology theories, human-centric design of technology and organization, but very much on uh, gender and diverse, diversity theories as tools to develop the technology. Uh, so what does, how is gender connected to the industrial work of the future and the green and digital indus, industrial transition? This is a very common picture of uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, you perhaps have uh, heard about it's the digital uh, industrial uh, uh, revolution, the fourth industrial re revolution when everyone should be connected and digital. And this is a very common picture of how to uh, illustrate the, the people working in it. But you see, they are all male. They are no, because uh, Lego, you know, the where you built Lego, they are very often just small uh, men walking around. It's very, very seldom women are workers or whatever. Uh, so if you use that kind of tools to illustrate something, you perhaps uh, reinforce the stereotype picture of, uh, of how, you, uh, how, you, how, how you think about uh, mining work. But nevertheless, uh, what, well, how I see that gender is connected is that uh, first we, it's a question about uh, these quite a rapid and large investments that are going on right now in the north of Sweden, but also in many other countries as well. It's all of them, uh, they are in male dominated industries, some of them new, some of them old. Uh, the mining is an old industry, but the digitalization is the new, but still they are male dominated. Uh, but nevertheless, it will be quite large changes, even if it will be not, uh, not, not as large as we perhaps talk about, but it will be changes and new conditions for industrial work. And therefore, gender patterns in the organization will be affected. Uh, because new technology challenges the old workplace cultures and professional identities. It, uh, it is something that has happened for many, many years. And uh, there will be new context and new conditions for mining work. Uh, for example, improved work environment and safety, new types of work tasks, new professional roles, new skills will be demanded in the mining sector, new ways of organizing work, team, learning, flexibility, agile, uh, and also increased and also new demands on attractive workplaces on responsibility, on trust, on commitment, on social sustainability and gender equality. So in the future, there will be a new type of people that will be employed in the mining sector, perhaps. Uh, but also the current ones need to change. So this will be a big difference between the old and new. Uh, sometimes when I talk to mining companies, they are saying, well, that's no problem. As soon as we get in the new technology in the mines, there will be a lot of more women working in the, in the mining sector. They are hoping that the new technology by itself create more gender equality and new gender patterns because of better work environment and increased competence requirements. Uh, and also new higher demands on efficient, flexible, sustainable organizations that we have seen already is a, is a driver for companies work for gender equality. Uh, and also the idea of the green skills that uh, they're hoping that that, that will be also be. Uh, and we could see, we can also see that uh, this also picture, you see pictures from the 
mining, you see there are women working in, in all, they really know, this, this is from the company's web pages, uh, and they are really want to show that there are women working in the, in the, in the mines. Uh, this one I have, I have taken myself, but you see also here women working in the mines, and here two women as well. This is mining work, quite far away from the the child, the children that were working in the in the the, Cla the Clara shows, quite far away from that. So mining could be many different things, uh, but this is the picture of how uh, the number of women in mining as mining workers have changed in Sweden. Uh, Long time ago, before industrialization, uh, it was uh, around in some mines, it was 50 50 women and men working in the mining sector. It was during that time we in Sweden had a lot of manual work in, in the mines, and then we also have women working there. Uh, but around 1900, it was almost zero women. And this, this I think, is the same type of uh, figures in, 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 uh, in many countries all over the world. It was soon when, when the, an industry get more and more mechanized and more and more better work environment, the women are disappearing from, from the industry. And this was also the case in, in, in mining. Uh, but nowadays we are uh, up in 20 percent, perhaps 25 percent uh, women in the mining sector, in the mining companies. Uh, but uh, we can see that a new technology meets a quite a reluctant context and all and this reluctant context is the mining pat, uh, is the gender patterns at the workplaces because the old mining work was and still is uh, largely male dominated numerically and physically 80 percent of the miners are men as i said but it is also discursive and symbolic male the gender labeling of uh, the mining work is male and the miners as a, as a male. Uh, so we can see that gender is interwoven into worker identity and the competence and the workplace culture. Old working class masculinity, the minor masculinity. You see here the picture, a real, I shall show you this way. A real mining worker is a man. He is brave, big, strong, and works underground with manual work. Uh, so we see that, uh, it's important to work with, uh, to discuss masculinity when we talk about uh, uh, talk about the gender in the mines. Uh, so what we see that changes, they are happening, but not smooth and not without resistance. And the, the kind of resistance we see is creating somewhat paradoxical, paradoxical. Uh, it's resistance towards uh, new technology, uh, resistance towards safety, uh, the green awareness also, uh, and gender equality and women minors. Uh, so what we can see, the problem is that will the new jobs be as male as the old ones, only different? Uh, because the implementation of computers, programming, gaming, deep tech, digitalization, AI, they are all male dominated and male gender technologies and areas of expertise. And that if they are implemented into uh, the, the old male dominated industry like mining, can this really uh, male domination plus male domination equal more women? So yeah, I think we, we have a challenge here. Uh, so we, we need to discuss how will the new jobs and technologies in the green and digital transformation be gendered? You see, this is uh, some of the new technology, the 3D printers, uh, and uh, this is from uh, a German university, students at the German university. You think I'm only taking my examples from German, but it's not. It's just happening to me uh, because I have had a lot of projects together with German universities. This is uh, what the students try to, uh, they were training their, practicing their 3D printing. Uh, activities in a in course. And uh, when we were there visiting, uh, we were just a group of uh, visitors, researchers, and the, the guy that took us through the laboratory labs where, where the students were working, uh, they wanted to show us how good they were at this 3D printing because it's it was a new technology. And But he realized, the guide, he realized that, hmm, 
these kind of small statues that were they will be they are not uh, really correct when you talk about gender equality quite a sexist uh, stereotype a picture of uh, a woman they had no uh, male it was only women the, this kind of uh, uh, female body here uh, so he was actually trying to stand before uh, so, we, so we shouldn't see them but they were a lot of these so he saw them you know and when he when he when he wanted to show us and describe of the material he hold his hand over so we couldn't see the <laughs> body, but we have already seen it. So I think he, but he was a little bit ashamed of what type of practicing uh, object they had, the, these kind of, and it was all male students at, at this course. So this is the new technology, the gender patterns in the, in the new technology, and uh, we'll see what's happening. It seems like I will end with a little bit more positive, picture because after a while it seems like this kind of macho masculinity is releasing from from mining work uh, we can already see this kind of move uh, from the old mining work to a digital high-tech worker we can at least hope there will be uh, and, and uh, there will it seems like it's this kind of old idea of the mining work it's getting more and more obsolete so we, there is no longer any place or function of these kind of old uh, ideas. Uh, so we see also a sign as a signs of increased gender equality, uh, better working environments for women. They actually have uh, changing rooms, they have toilets and better working clothes and all that kind of things. And also clearly improved attitudes and workplace culture. And as I said, more women. And especially in the, the digital areas, there we have a lot of women working. And we see also less gendered uh, workplaces. And uh, the companies, and I see it also, uh, to get, to, to get the, this kind of gender tone down in the organization is an important way, is a necessary to get a more, uh, for the companies to, to, uh, to be able to work efficiently with the development and change of the organization and technology. So we'll see, this is a picture of my PhD student. She has been studying the macho culture. It's in Sweden saying that the macho culture is uh, away, getting away from the mines. Uh, it's uh, progressively becoming obsolete, hopefully. Uh, so I will end with the, no, I will not end. I will uh, say, so uh, I will end going back to this NG project uh, that, uh, that, that I started with. Uh, so we don't, in, in the geoscience, we don't have as much as problems, I think, as in the mining companies, but there will probably, there are some similarities and you know much more than I do about what, what to do. But this is what we, from the work, we have a lot of workshops with the professionals in, in geoscience uh, and uh, they gave us these ideas. They will, we probably need much more. And I will, will uh, encourage you to think about what to do because I think we need to do something in, in geoscience to get up, to get more, to, ma to make both uh, geoscience as a profession, but also the companies to get more better function and better possibilities to be active and, as, and be, to do the important things that ge geoscience uh, are. And uh, first of all, the most common uh, suggestion is the exposure and access to STEM subjects at young age. Of course, that sh we should do, a, uh, but, but I think there's a lot to be done and I think there is need to be much more. But what we also say in, in our report from the projects is to, to focus the change on the circumstances, on the organizations, on the companies, on the, on the things, on the fields not on the individuals because it's so easy to focus on just trying to uh, make women uh, telling girls and women geoscience is fun and please chose up but i think they already think geoscience is fun they already are interested in and, and they have the right skills to be able to to join the the educations but they don't so question is why
why are they uh, quitting when as they, they start education and they become uh, educated in geoscience, but after a while they're working with other tasks. So why are they leaving geoscience? So here you have the, ch the, the challenge, the problem to do. So we need to uh, change the circumstances, not the individuals, avoid stereotypes and stereotypical images, these kind of Lego figures, don't do, use them. <laughs> uh, and also make geoscience subjects visible in many, many different things. And challenge rather than repu reproduce, uh, reproduce inequalities, show the variation uh, and diversity in geoscience uh, and have tried to really build the learning activities without gender bias. It's so easy that we build because we are carrying the gender bias, gender uh, inequality bias with us, many, all of us, but we need to make these learning activities. And also take the variations into account, different fields and contexts, national and local differences, uh, make sure that you have a different diversity of skills, jobs, professional and social background. Use, have a knowledge in all these kind of things and use it in, in the education. Uh, so how do learning activities portray and represent geoscience position? As uh, I think, Clara, you had a, a picture of that. Who is seen as a geoscientist? And who, who is allowed to be part of the textbooks? Who is uh, pictures? Who, is, who do we see as a geoscientist? So I think there's a lot of things to do and you can make this uh, at least much longer than this. This was just a teaser for what to do. So I think I stop here. Thank you.